Okay, so we're aware at this point that there are a lot of gimmicky gaming keyboards that are out there at the moment. A lot of them I just plainly don't review here on the channel because it's the same thing over and over again. But this is not one of those. This is the Wooting 60 HE, a keyboard that you guys have been going absolutely crazy over. So I'm glad that I've got this here for review. But it's the first kind of gaming keyboard, in fact, where it has what appears to be these gimmicky features. But in reality, these features enable a completely different gaming experience. And by different gaming experience, Experience, we mean, you know, better in every single sense. We're talking about inputs that feel sharper, faster, and what really feels like an evolution of the gaming keyboard. Now we've seen analog switches in gaming keyboards before. Instead of using a contact within the switch to measure a digital signal like a normal switch, essentially just on or off, analog switches use a Hall effect sensor with a magnet, which can measure the position of the switch at any time. So whether you're pressing it at a depth of one millimeter or two millimeters or even 0.1 millimeters, millimeters, it's that accurate, with an analog switch, you'll be able to set that as the actuation point. So a couple of cool things here. Firstly, it allows you to have that granular input, kind of like a joystick. Think of playing a game where you need to control the speed of a character or a car, for example, and have that really fine input. But what's more practical and exciting, in my opinion, is that it allows you to customize the actuation point of the switch. So for example, if you want a faster actuating switch, you could reduce the actuation point to something like 1.2 millimeters. Since it's actuated earlier, the input therefore feels faster. And it goes the other way too. If there are some keys out there that you keep accidentally hitting, you can deepen the actuation point a bit further to something like three millimeters. That way, those keys only actuate with completely intentional key presses. And yeah, with the Wooting 60 HE, you can actually do this on a per key basis, which is really, really cool. And so the way that I set this up for first person shooters, which I found to work incredibly well, was to set the global actuation point for, you know, just all keys to 1.3 millimeters except for the Windows key, which I increased all the way to four millimeters, and also the Q key, which is usually my character ability key and something that I do fumble and accidentally press every now and then. I increased that to 2.5 millimeters and now that's not a problem. But then there are also some keys that are the opposite of this. Your WASD keys, for example, keys which you're really proficient with and you've trained yourself to be really good with. I set those to actuate at just one millimeter. So that's the first really cool thing about this keyboard, those custom actuation points, and they really do create a sharper feeling kind of movement experience and just snappier feeling inputs. It does really feel much better than a regular gaming keyboard, not even just compared to a custom keyboard, which are typically a little bit on the slower end of keyboards and whatnot, but you know, even compared to a Huntsman Mini or a Corsair or whatever, uh, you know, those custom actuation points, raising that up to something that is going to actuate faster, it does genuinely feel like a faster input experience. Now with the wording, you can actually go even further than this. And it's this next feature called Rapid Trigger, which makes this feel completely different to any other gaming keyboard out there. Essentially what Rapid Trigger does is it resets the switch the moment that the switch becomes a depressed. So as soon as you start lifting up, that switch becomes reset. It doesn't have to wait, you know, between two millimeters of keystroke travel or however much the actuation point is, literally the instant that you start lifting up your finger on that switch, that's when the switch is reset. And this just makes so much sense from a gaming point of view. If you've already started releasing the key, that's 100% an intention to stop using it. But with every other keyboard out there, you'd have to wait until that key is released past the actuation point. With a Cherry MX Red, for example, you'd have to wait for two millimeters of keystroke travel. With Rapid Trigger, you only have to release the key 0.1 millimeters for it to be reset set, which is effectively instantaneous. And so combining this with the faster actuating switches, it can enable you to have movement inputs in game, which are a serious step up from what most people can do with a regular gaming keyboard. For example, in Valorant, where the movement meta is this kind of dance strafing kind of thing, if you miss your first shot, uh, the speed and ease at which you can do this is nuts compared to a regular gaming keyboard. You can initiate movement faster and stop movement way faster, thanks to the faster actuating switches and that rapid trigger feature. Now don't get me wrong, this isn't impossible movement by any means. You can totally do this on a normal gaming keyboard, you just have to be really really good in terms of knowing where your switch actuation points are. In fact, with the Wooting rapid trigger feature set to 0.1 millimeters, you'd have to be insanely dialed in on a regular gaming keyboard to even get close to matching that kind of stopping speed. You can also do things like safely hold angles while jiggling back and forth, and the dodge movement like I said is a lot easier because you're basically never overlapping movement keys. So yeah, can totally recommend this for Valorant. Honestly, it's hard to think that this wouldn't be seriously overpowered in the hands of a top tier player. But then 
Also in Apex, movement inputs feel a lot sharper there too. For example, there's a mechanic called air strafing, which is basically chaining multiple directional keys together really quickly in a circular movement, and it looks something like this. To do this properly, you can't overlap the inputs, and the timing also has to be pretty quick and successive. Again, on other keyboards, you can do this with enough practice. It's basically just getting the timing and muscle memory down, but with the Wooting 60, it is just so much easier to do. Again, similar to Valorant, primarily because you're not overlapping those inputs and the inputs themselves are much faster. As soon as you've begun lifting off a key, it's already deactivated and reset with that rapid trigger feature and you can put in your next input. There's also super gliding in Apex, which should be a bit easier on the wooding as well. This input is a lot harder to do, especially at higher frame rates, which is why I don't really practice it, but I did find that I was able to get the timing down slightly more consistent compared to my usual keyboard. Here you need to press the spacebar and C key at the same time, basically jump and crouch. And here you have a very short two frame or so window to do this after the climbing animation. If done correctly, you'll get this insane looking movement boost that looks like this. The reason that it's easier to do on this keyboard is because of those custom actuation points, because for super glides, you actually need to hit the spacebar or jump key slightly before the crouch key. We're talking a few milliseconds. So by artificially setting the jump key to actuate earlier, you can potentially potentially be a bit more consistent at hitting it. So lots of advanced and niche movement stuff for first person shooters is really cool on this keyboard, but just movement in general feels a lot cleaner and sharper. That whole thing about never really overlapping inputs, it's one of the most noticeable things here compared to any other keyboard that I've used. Strafing back and forth, for example, you know, generally feels a bit snappier and I almost feel like I'm a little bit more in sync with my mouse inputs now as well. And let's just take a second to appreciate the software for this keyboard, which is a web page, by the way. No need to download any software or anything like that, although that is an option. Simply open up the web page on your browser, make your adjustments, save your profile to your keyboard, that's it. The interface as well is just super straightforward and clearly explains exactly what everything does. One thing that didn't work though was their tachyon mode. Uh, for whatever reason, this just completely freaked out on my board whenever I selected it. So I've left that disabled, hopefully they can fix it. You can also do things here like remap the key layout and add additional layers, or even add advanced functionality to specific keys. There's one function here which allows you to add up to four separate binds within a separate keystroke, which is nuts. Essentially, you know, four different actuations within a single keystroke, or you can use the mod tap function to make tapping or holding down a key do separate things. For example, setting the bottom right key cluster to work as arrow keys when tapped, but having normal functionality when held. So in the end, this is what my preferred layout looks like after a few days working and gaming with it. I'm sure it will evolve the more I use it, but for now, really, really happy with how this is working. It's also so cool that you can just make adjustments here on the fly. I feel like that's something that we're taking for granted. There's no messing around with a configurator and then compiling a file and then, you know, setting your keyboard into flash mode like you'd have to do with a custom board. Here, you honestly just make the changes in a web page and click save. What else is super cool here? The build of the keyboard itself is pretty decent. You know, not insane, but it's pretty damn good. The analog switches feel okay. They bottom out at 60 grams though, so they're a little bit on the lighter side. You've also got some sound dampening built in between the plate and the PCB and at the bottom of the keyboard as well. And the stabilizers too are pretty good for a gaming keyboard. In fact, coming from a custom 60% build myself, I'm almost offended at how good this sounds out of the box without even touching it. What is really crazy though, and to kind of explain what I've got going on here, uh, you can take the Wooting 60 PCB and all of that great analog gaming power and put it in a custom 60% tofu case, which is just insane. Like this is my keyboard basically, but it's just using that insane PCB and functionality that we saw earlier. Shout out to Bad Seed Tech, of course. I wouldn't have known about this if I didn't watch his review. I'll leave that video link down below. But yeah, super easy to do. It's just a few screws. You just transfer it over. You can go the extra step as well and do some, you know, different keycaps as well. But 
pretty happy that this is even possible because it looks awesome. The only drawback compared to my previous setup in the Tofu is that this one doesn't feel and sound as good. You can't change the switches or the plate, but I'm also keeping in mind that I haven't added any extra lube for the switches or the stabilizers, which should help out things at least a little bit. The bottom line is that I don't think that this will ever sound as good as like a full custom keyboard build. Even in a Tofu with say a polycarbonate plate and some really nice switches, uh, you know, this lubed up, I don't think will ever sound as good as that. But to be honest, I don't think I even care because the whole experience here with the Wooting PCB and the, you know, inputs that feel this good, I don't think that there's any custom keyboard out there that could make me switch off of this setup for gaming. It's currently priced at about 190 euros, which is on the pricier end of things, but that is totally worth it considering the innovation and actually useful features that you get along with it. In fact, this is one of the very few gaming peripherals out there where I feel you are getting an instant advantage. So really looking forward to getting a lot more game time with this thing. Of course, I'll leave it linked down below as well with the case and maybe some lube that you might want to add to the board. Uh, as always, a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.